Greetings. The name is Mike Kalinowski, a member here at Patuxen Baptist Church. And I'd like to just to address a few promises found in the Word of God today. Uh, you know, the Bible is rich, actually from cover to cover, as far as various types of promises. Some promises are universal to all mankind. Some promises are for specific people, persons, uh, and however you, we can break it down. But the first promise we want to look at is in Genesis in chapter 2. God had just created the earth, seven literal days, and created man, and they're having a staff meeting, if you will, if I may say so. And in chapter 2, verse 13, uh, no, let's go down to verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. It's a promise of God. He says, you do this, this is what's going to happen. Everything is at your disposal. Everything's at, uh, for your benefit. So further on, as we go down through, through the Bible, and we're not going to look at, certainly we could not exhaust all the promises, but it, it would be an encouragement and an encouraging study for you to do so. John chapter 10, verse 28, says that God says that no man shall be able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. As a child of God, I know that I am safe and secure forevermore with God. That's a promise, it's a rich promise. Uh, Romans in chapter eight, verse 35, one of my favorite portions of the Word of God tells me that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate me from the love of God. That's a rich, blessed promise. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, a promise that God gives unto all people, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wonderful promises. You know, when our family was younger, a few years ago, uh, they would ask for things or go certain places. And one of the things, one of our responses became was, we will see, we'll see. And that was for one reason, because a lot of the, the bringing it to fruition was out of our control. As in James chapter 4, verse 15, tells us, for what, ye, for what ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. And it got to the point also that when they would ask about something and dad would say, we'll see, they'd immediately get dejected and they go, so what's the matter? Well, that means no. No, that's not the case, but we'll, it's in the Lord's hands. Promises of God. Now, I want you to take over as we look quickly at three promises, and this is, these promises are exclusive, I believe, to the child of God, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 13. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you be able to bear it. Three promises found in this particular verse of this particular chapter to the child of God. Now we know that first of all, that there's a promise in the first part of that verse, there is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. There's nothing extraordinary about the temptations that are coming your way. It's not extraterrestrial. It's not uh, extraordinary, but it's such, such as is common to man. Think of the temptation that came along, if you know the story of the, the, the event that took place between Jacob and Esau. Esau came out from hunting one day, and he, was, he said he was starving to death. Well, he just greatly exaggerated because... Yes, he was hungry. Jacob ended up getting his birthright for a bowl of soup, a bowl of pottage, or as Brother Rich says, it's a bowl of chili. Whichever, that could that'd probably be apropos. But anyway, he shortchanged himself. It, it was not extraordinary. We all get hungry sometimes. Sometimes people get hangry, or however you want to put it. But it was not, it was the temptation was not out of bounds, it was not out of limits but such as is common to man. It's, it's universal, if you will. As Romans chapter 8, verse 28 tells us, For all things work together 
to the good, to the good for those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. It works for our good and for God's glory. It's handcrafted just for you. I used to have a pair of boots, the uh, Western uh, cowboy boots that were handcrafted. They fit my feet like nobody else's. It was handpicked, and that temptation is brought to you by God. It's handpicked just for you. He knows our frame, as Psalms chapter 103 tells us in verse 14. Not only is that promise, the promise of temptation is coming your way, there's a promise. There's another promise part of that verse in verse 13. It says there's a promise that the temptation will not be overwhelming. And that says, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape. God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Mercies are new every day. Lamenta Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 23. It is, or verse, yeah, verse 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is, the, is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. God promises that our temptations will not be overwhelming. That's a blessed assurance that we have of the promises of God. And not only those do we have, we have another promise found written in that, uh, I believe in that verse uh, 13, that you'll make, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you'll be able to bear it. There's a promise there that it's not eternal. It's not forever. There is a way through it. In Job chapter 1, verse 21, and I dare say there's, not, there's few people upon the face of the earth that endured the trials and tribulations and the experiences of life that Job did. But in verse uh, 21 of Job chapter 1, Job says, And naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. That he knew, I believe in his heart, that that temptation, that situation, was not going to be eternal. It says, even through whatever the temptation that may come your way, simply don't quit. God's going to bring things into your lives. God brings things into my life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 tells us that my grace is sufficient. That's a promise, a promise from the Word of God. In these days that it may seem to be unsettling and uncertain, and certainly has been used many times in uncharted waters, God is faithful. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, the latter part of that verse, tells us that I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Back to Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Again, nothing can separate us from the love of God. For there is no temptation, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For there is no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that be able to bear it.